Chapter 5. The Evolution of Memes Once our brains evolved to the point where we could receive, store, modify, and communicate ideas, there suddenly appeared a new environment that had the two characteristics needed for evolution, copying and innovating. Our brains, which arose out of increasing usefulness in the process of keeping us alive and breeding, suddenly were thrust into the spotlight of evolution. The brand new innovation of the human mind was not just another arena for evolution besides the cell, it was a far better arena, simply because evolution takes place far more quickly. The biological forces that evolved our brains to the point where we had minds were now outdone a million times over by the new mimetic forces evolving our thoughts, our society, and our culture. Evolution of the meme was assured. Meme evolution happens because our minds are good at copying and innovating. Ideas, behaviors, tunes, shapes, structures, and so on. We evolved genetically to the point where we had minds because of a selfish gene for minds, or for some precursor of minds that gave people with that gene a survival advantage. With that advantage, we survive and multiply, replicating the selfish gene for minds. The DNA that causes us to have minds is, of course, not quite as fit as the DNA that makes insects small, fast, and hard-shelled. There are far more insects than people, and we're not even that good at winning battles with insects over who gets to live where. But our minds are certainly an advantage to us, and therefore to our host DNA. From the DNA's point of view, of course, we're still here for one reason only, to go forth and multiply. But the DNA's only way to achieve its purpose is through the glacially slow process of genetic evolution, one step every 20 years or so, compared with the breakneck pace of meme evolution in which an idea mutates in the time it takes to read a sentence. Because mimetic evolution happens so much faster, most of what we do with our brains has little to do with genetic evolution. Being a genius, advancing the state of science or technology, creating art, writing plays, all of these are kludgy uses of our brain, layered on top of the uses that made brainy people go forth and multiply. I'm not saying we can completely ignore genes from now on. There have been alarming reports of the lowering of the general intelligence level because smart people have fewer babies. If there are any genes that give people the tendency to take on memes that limit their number of offspring, they will die out in a few generations in favor of competing genes that give people a tendency to acquire childbearing memes. So making a note to keep an eye on our mental rearview mirror to check on the progress of genetic evolution every once in a while, let's shift into the fast lane for the rest of the book and run with the memes. The mechanism of evolution has no purpose in itself. It is simply the inexorable battle of replicators for access to whatever replication mechanisms are available. The evolution of ideas, culture, and society revolves around the selfish meme just as the evolution of species revolves around the selfish gene. Again, this is not the truth, just a useful model. And viewing life in this way may be a big pill to swallow. After all, we're used to thinking of ourselves as brilliant, free-thinking individuals, not players in the memes game. But it's a pill that relieves much of the headache of understanding how culture works. From a meme's point of view, our minds exist for the sole purposes of making copies of the meme. I'm not saying a meme has a point of view, just that if it did have one, that's what it would be. The selfish meme is just as selfish as the selfish gene, and the concept is just as void of any literal meaning. The purpose of looking at the world from the point of view of mindless replicators is that it brings a great deal of clarity to a confusing situation. So from a meme's point of view, not only our minds and brains, but also our whole bodies, cities, countries, and certainly television sets, exist for that same selfish purpose. That's important to understand. If television sets did not aid in copying memes, we would have no television sets. They certainly didn't evolve biologically. The most popular and prevalent parts of our culture are the most effective at copying memes. Every part of our culture, beyond what we see in animal cultures, and maybe even that, is a product of meme evolution. The most popular ideas are the ones that spread the easiest. The most popular art is the art with the fittest memes. Television is a crucible for meme evolution. 
Shows that don't attract repeat viewers or word-of-mouth recommendations die quickly, replaced by an endless supply of mutations and variations. Ideas for running your business, managing your finances, and improving your life become prevalent not because they're the best for you, but because they are the best at spreading. The two are sometimes related, but often not. We have many ways to spread memes. Speech, writing, body language, monkey see, monkey do, television. But why do some memes, such as the proverbial bad news, travel fast, while other memes, such as the ones in unpopular TV shows, die quickly? We can start to get an answer to that question by speculating about back when genetic evolution had more influence upon the contents of our brains than meme evolution did. Initially, the only purpose of our brains was to help our DNA make copies of itself. The chief way we helped it do that is by surviving, mating with other people who shared most of that DNA, and having as many children as possible live to reproduce. Our brains made us better at pursuing the four basic drives that animals have, fondly referred to by zoologists as the four Fs, fighting, fleeing, feeding, and uh, finding a mate. Memes build on these basic brain functions. These brain functions are part of the hardware design for the software called memes. As animals evolved, those that had a superior ability to communicate certain information tended to survive and reproduce better than the others. Back to the four Fs. Information about danger, about the location of food, and about the fact that they are ready to mate. Communication evolved in order to communicate very specific things. Danger, food, and sex. Therefore, we, as the product of evolution of animals, find ourselves with the tendency both to talk about and to pay attention to danger, food, and sex in preference to other subjects. Memes involving danger, food, and sex spread faster than other memes because we are wired to pay more attention to them. We have buttons around those subjects. It would be a challenge to find any culture or subculture on Earth today that did not concern itself with crises, missions, problems, dangers, or opportunities. Let's run a quick check to see if we spend an inordinate amount of our communication bandwidth on those subjects. Sprinkle in with our danger, food, and sex. Flip through a few channels on your TV. Leaf through a few pages of your daily newspaper. The national fiction bestseller list is populated with thrillers and love stories. And the nonfiction list has books about deadly diseases, improving your sex life, eating better food, and political crises, with only the occasional self-improvement book to offer a twinkle of hope. And people probably only read those because they're scared of the danger they'll encounter if they don't. I always thought the book The Doctor's Quick Weight Loss Diet must have sold a million copies on the memes in the title alone. What an opportunity to have someone you trust address the problem of your sex appeal crisis over food! To illustrate the effectiveness of the crisis, mission, problem, danger, and opportunity memes, listen to the following two paragraphs, both accurate descriptions of a book about memes. This first paragraph doesn't have these memes in it. Introduction to Memetics is a compilation of ideas on the science of memetics. Each chapter summarizes a different topic in this field. Included are examples of how memetics impacts people's lives, illustrates historical data, and offers choices for the future. The second is chock full of all five of these key memes. Virus of the mind exposes the imminent crisis of the dangerous new technology known as memetics. What is it, and how can we guard against its harmful effects? Our only chance is to have everyone read Virus of the Mind before it's too late. A common reaction would be to fall asleep halfway through the first paragraph and to pay much more attention to the second. You have little control over that tendency. Your brain is hardwired to respond that way. You may have noticed some skepticism kicking in while listening to the second paragraph. The skepticism strategy meme protects the existing set of memes your mind is holding to some degree. Unfortunately, it resists beneficial and harmful new memes equally. Now it gets more complicated, so hold on tight. Remember, our brains were not engineered for a specific purpose. They were kludged together by natural selection, different things being tried out, strengthened, weakened, and combined, until something interesting happened that caused the genes responsible for that thing to replicate better than the others. 
That's how our brains and those of other animals evolved to pay close attention to information involving danger, food, and sex. Our brains have a natural tendency to pay attention to some other things, too. Laughter and yawning, for instance, are both contagious. Our brains tend to replicate them when they're around. But most of the things to which our brains are attentive evolved in order to support our survival and reproduction. The complexity comes because genetic evolution didn't just stop at the point where we were equipped to notice a tiger running toward us, a ready-to-eat meal, or an eyelash-batting member of the opposite sex. Evolution naturally progressed to select for a diversity of clever, sneaky, and indirect ways of avoiding danger, finding food, and wooing mates. All animals have four basic instinctual drives, fighting, fleeing, feeding, and mating. So in addition to paying attention to danger, food, and sex, our brains come equipped with two ways of dealing with danger, and one each for food and sex, with no conscious thought necessary. These drives work by firing up appropriate parts of our brains, which if we don't consciously intervene, will drive us to satisfy the need. Even if we do consciously refrain from acting on impulse, we can feel this all going on quite easily, and in fact have names for the distinct feelings that go along with the drives to fight, flee, feed, and mate. Anger, fear, hunger, and lust. These four feelings are wired so directly into our brains that civilized though we may get, we experience from time to time someone or something pushing our buttons, saying or doing something that generates one of these basic feelings in us. It's very difficult to avoid paying attention when it happens, and where there's attention, there are memes. <laughs>